And as you can see, my Barbara sweater is a finished object. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my very small uh, place of uh, this corner of the internet when I talk about where I talk about my knitting adventures. And it's going to be a regular episode today where I talk about what I'm working on, what I have finished. And we are currently into another, yet another storm. The north of France is flooded and we have much rain, much wind. So I kept the house shut and I'm going to go work after that. It's quite early in the morning. My cats are inside and quite unhappy to be <laughs> grounded inside, but I don't want to let them out. And I would like to thank Magda. Uh, who commented on a previous video where uh, I was talking about the previous storm that was Kieran and uh, um, I was mis mispronouncing it and I just repeated what was on the French news and I guess everyone was mispronouncing that male Gaelic uh, name. So very sorry and very, I'm very thankful to you, Magda, for uh, giving me input on this name. I haven't even checked how the current storm um, is named, but uh, is named. But uh, uh, yes, the house, I haven't opened the windows. There is a lot of wind and a lot of rain. So uh, here we are for today. Okay, first, what am I wearing? And it's going to be at the same time what I am wearing and uh, uh, my first uh, finished object, because I have to. So this is my Barbara sweater. I love it. Um, it is just blocked. It took three days to dry out in this very damp and cold weather. It was next to a heater, uh, but it, it took a long time to dry out. And I took about two months uh, to knit it. I knit the Barbara sweater by Marianne Eisayer uh, with uh, wool from Lenal West. So these are, I've, I've said many, many times here on this channel, wool that is from a farm in Cotentin. So that's the uh, western part of uh, Normandy. And uh, um, they have a program to save some sheep breed. So there are one sheep breed that was, uh, they, they recovered, there is a, a, a national program. So, and uh, two other breeds that were basically breeds for meat. So with less interesting wool, but the one that was dying out was because it's not a breed that, it, that is interesting for meat. And uh, uh, many people in the uh, later years had stopped knitting and, and uh, the breed was dying out. So they revived it. They crossbreed with other breeds because there were not enough um, genetic stock to, to retrieve the breed as it was originally. And now they are making um, their yarn with these three breeds that uh, sometimes they mix and match. And they also naturally die on their own farm. So the darker part is, uh, uh, so that's their sports weight. It's quite rough and dry to the touch. The, uh, it's all undyed, so the creamy part is the natural creamy color of the sheep and the darker part is uh, um, a mix of the black and gray and brown and white fleeces and they have several shades that they mix and match. Just before I forget, and I won't talk about it because late more than that, because you have seen it a lot of times, my little bandana that I made with um, Romney yarn by uh, Frédéric from uh, Atelier Purelaine. So I'm going to take it out and maybe I'm going to uh, stand up so that uh, you can see the whole sweater. Okay, so here is my Barbara. You can see it from the side. And in the back, I'm going to turn all around. I'm not sure I'm seeing what I'm doing. Um, so you start from the back, you knit up, you cast on stitches for the sleeves, then you knit up to the uh, neck opening, you continue and you 
make your throws to have a bit more fabric in the back. Then you cast on for the neck opening. You need um, the sleeves, you decrease, then you continue to knit the front and the last trimming. Um, so it's sewn from, uh, I, I, I sewed it in one, one go or several goes because I, I used, uh, uh, I did not use a very long thread, but I sewn in one go from the bottom to the wrists on one side on the other side, I'm not sure it's gonna be cut uh, correctly because I forgot I did not want to stand up and uh, I sit down when recording. So, and then I picked up stitches around the neck. I need the color. So that's one modification I made. This color I, I need twice and the neck opening was way too wide, way too wide. So, um, uh, I ripped out and I picked out, I picked up the right number of stitches and I decreased about a third of the stitches during the first round. And then I knit the three by three ribbing as uh, the bottom and the cuffs. And uh, it's just, it just goes around my, my head. I don't have to um, expand it or, or push it or, or pull on it too much. And I'm much, much happier with a tighter neck because I'm always, always, always cold around my neck and I don't like much. I have a few pieces, but I don't like much to have a very wide neck. So then I had left a few centimeters um, on my wrist here where I had not finished at the seam. So I need back and forth. I picked up stitches and I need back and forth. Uh, for the cuffs and then I, I stitch it back. One thing, one other thing, my sleeves are very long, a bit longer than what I like, but I'm gonna go with it. Um, thinking as I was knitting of gauge, when I was casting on the stitches from the back, I was kind of trying to figure out if this was going to be okay or not. And I ended up doing the proper amount of increases as in the pattern. I should maybe have stopped one, one increase before or made the increases a bit more rapid. I'm not sure, but it's a bit long, but as it's gonna be a winter sweater and I've, I'm always cold, I, I said I'm okay with longer, longer sleeves and sleeve that goes, um, that go up down to my wrist. And what I can do also, I've tried already, is to tuck it under that way. So of course you don't see the ribbing and I can tuck it completely if I want to. And the sleeve is just gonna be the right size for me. So uh, I can stay that way without the ribbing, but I like the look of the sleeves with the ribbing a bit better. I'm not sure what you prefer, what you think, but uh, to me, it's gonna be okay. And if, and, and, and it, I, I did not want to make it too tight and then the sleeves balloon it out to the whole sleeve itself, because I don't think it's, I don't think it is the right look to have a balloon sleeve for this kind of uh, relaxed type of sweater. And the Barbara is uh, by Marianne Isaiah from the book A Knitting Life, one of you so generously offered me. And uh, yes, it, this book has many, many other beautiful patterns that uh, I'm, I'm considering casting on at some point. I have a few ideas uh, and uh, I do appreciate having books, reading through them. And as you will see in my next Year No By Year video, I have, I have been bad. I have bought books and patterns and stuff like that. So you'll see that. In the meantime, I am so very happy with this sweater. It is light. It is very warm. The, the yarn itself is very warm. Um, and I think that the fact that you have 
some kind of a color work. There are places, there are several strands of yarn on top of each other, namely in the little V's or little mountains, depending on you, if you're looking at the front or the back, as it's knit on piece, on one piece, you see the back is more little V's and the front is more little mountains because it's knit that way. Uh, so there are several strands on top of each other and it's extremely warm. The same way this little scarf that is everywhere with me for now, in my bag, when I, when I take it out, it's in my bag so that I can always have it with me. This little scarf adds up layers and layers and layers around my neck on top of other, other knits. And it's really, really keeping me very warm around my neck without having too much bulk. Uh, I don't have it here because I have prepared my 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 bag to go um, uh, to go to work just after I film the video. Uh, the other uh, shawl I'm wearing a lot is Pathway that I knit with um, the mm, I think it was the Hampshire down from uh, Le, uh, Atelier Pure Laine. Same thing. The yarn is very sticky, so you tuck the shawl around your neck. It stays that way. It doesn't move. It doesn't go away when you adjust your coat or whatever. And it's extremely warm, and it repels. You know, when when people say that some yarn repel the moisture, it's it's not moisture proof, of course. If you go into the rain at some point, the rain and the heavy rain, the rain is going to go through. That's that's a fact, but it keeps moist, moisture away up to a certain point and it keeps you warm and cozy and dry up because the moisture feeling is what also what makes you feel very cold or at least what makes me feel very cold. So, uh, yeah, pure coziness, pure warmth in these very, very, very damp and cold days. Next, another finished object. Yeah, finished object, extravaganza. You may recall, you may recall last year for my birthday, my youngest son and his girlfriend offered me um, this DMC woolly, so wool that they went to, um, so it's DK weight to get, I think it's DK weight, between DK and sports that they got at Lille Vessel, a store in Paris, in this uh, sunflower yellow and this la lavender lilac. Um, uh, it's, it's more lilac and purple than what I see, at least in my, uh, in my screen. So I need the double layer. It's a double layer gingham um, coal. So uh, as I've already shown here, you have the yellow and on the other side you have the lilac and I had I used the ball almost a ball com a complete ball of each for this little coal I'm not gonna wear it because I don't think it goes with my Barbara sweater but anyway and I was thinking what am I going to be making with the remaining two balls so I want something to go with the coal so maybe a bini and then it stayed that way because I, when I finished it, it was the warmer, the more warmer days and I forgot about it because I did not wear it. And when the weather was cold again, I started to wear it again and I was thinking, I want to use the other uh, two boards. So I was looking around, very loosely looking around. That means just let things come to me. So that's what, let things come to me when I was browsing the social networks or browsing my, my maids and everything. In Tom Stein, I'm on her mailing list. She has lots of uh, beautiful patterns. I've knit a couple already. Uh, sent me a code for my birthday. I think I've talked about that already. So I was thinking, yeah, a little beanie. I, I had seen a beanie from her and that I liked and I said okay so the code was enough for a small accessory or it was a two or three or four euros uh, of 
a regular one of a regular patterns. So I got this No Pom Pom Art Deco Beanie. It's a very blown out because I think I, my windows are closed. Um, so it's lavender. It's a small lilac lavender. And this um, Art Deco Beanie, I liked a lot because it's a very subtle motif. You have regular ribbing at the beginning then a subtle motif during the beanie. And it's called no pom-pom because you can either knit it that way without a pom-pom or knit the pom-pom. And what I have done, she recommends it in the pattern. I had old stockings, uh, plastic stockings that I cut to have just enough for the pom-pom. So I'm going to wear it even though it's not going to go very well with what I'm wearing right now. Where is the back? The back must be here. And I like this little beanie a lot. I like it a lot. It's just the right size. It's not slouchy. I do like slouchy beanie and you can see, maybe if I turn on the side, I have no idea because I can't, I can't see myself uh, when I turn on the side. Just the perfect size. Um, that you can also wear when you are um, when you are at home. Uh, doesn't have to be when you are outside. If you're cold, you're cold. And um, yeah, I I I, I hope one day when uh, the weather will be better and my other windows will be uh, open, I will wear that again with the proper outfit, and then you can see a beautiful pattern, a beautiful little beanie that. Uh, she calls, I think it, she calls it the Art Deco No Pom Pom number two. And it does look like, it does remind me of Art Deco. Yes, that's very true. And it goes together and with the remaining of the um, sunflower yellow, I will make wrist warmers or mittens or things like that. I have an idea and I will tell you just after that uh, for the pattern. I may, I may, I may do something. Anyway. A very nice beanie that is going to go with my little color. Um, it's a lighter one. I knit it with three and a half millimeter needles. So uh, it's, a, it's a lighter beanie. But you need to have warmer ones and lighter ones. And I mostly have warmer ones. And I have berets that I bought in the, I buy in the south of France. I have when I'm in the Pyrenees, it's, it's, it's a tradition, berets are tradition from this area. And I have one in ev every, mostly every color now, or every color that I like. Maybe not khaki, I, I need to buy a khaki one or make a khaki beret myself. Uh, but anyway, lighter, so the, these berets are wool, it's sturdy wool. Once again, um, when it rains at some point, it will go through. But for a lighter rain, the beret is going to keep you dry under. So uh, a, a smaller beanie, a beautiful and cute pom-pom. What do you think? This pom-pom is just perfect. She does that perfectly. And uh, another, another way, another project with a lot of meaning because the yarn was a present, the pattern was a present, this pattern was a present too. So I like to uh, place people into my needs. Um, even, even my little scarf, uh, the, the yarn, the yarn, Frédéric is not happy with it, with the way, it, the way it's plied and it goes sideways when, when you need it. And she gave me 50, 25 or 30 grams or 50 grams, I, I don't recall, uh, for me to try. And this one was also a present. And I like to place people <laughs> into my needs. I, I discovered that, I'm not sure why, but I do. So you see here, there is in every nick that I'm wearing and showing to you, there is someone from my life. Okay, next we're going to go in order and uh, we are going to go to my work in progress. Once again, I won't talk about the little call that I'm still working on a little uh, one row here and there. Okay. That's a pain. I need to finish it. I know I need to finish it. So what I'm currently working on. The first one you've already seen is The Skin by Xiaomi Bergen. Let's do it that way. And if I'm mispronouncing her name, once for one, I'm very sorry. And for two, please tell me. 
I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous. I haven't heard from uh, Amandine yet from the farm in Poitou. Ferme de la Croche-Cœur. I'm going to write it here. So I'm knitting this sweater. Uh, it's from um, an Amirisu book, Darama collection. The thing is, so it's with kid silk mohair. It's um, 200 meters per 20 grams, I think. And you start with four strands. I have already shown you um, this part I had separated for the sleeves. So you have the front and there is an open back with a little eyelet and uh, uh, I'll go I'll go get little buttons to close it here. In in the in the in the pattern, the, these are little mother of pearls uh, buttons. I'm not sure this is much my style, but I think it goes very well with the sweater. So anyway, we'll see. So you are going to be seeing. I have knit quite a bit because not only did I knit the part with um, three strands. But I'm on the part with two strands. And you can see now the difference. If I do that, maybe that was going to be working. The difference in the uh, fabric between two strands here, where I don't see much of a difference between two strands, four strands, and three strands. Not much. But anyway, I see much of a difference between, how is it going to be straight that way? between three and two. And in the first few rows, I was kind of concerned about my gauge. So I increased the needle size, half a needle size, half, half a millimeter. So I think I'm on 5.5 millimeter needles and I don't see anything here. I'm going to write it down because I don't, be, I don't see. And these are my little coconut stoppers. Okay, so all of this is going very well. I tried it on. It's a still a little cropped, but with the remaining, I have a few rows, a few centimeters to go uh, with the two strands and then go with one strand. So it's going to be tunic length, the way the pattern calls for it. This is what I have left from these two balls. So I have quite enough to be knitting. And the rest is living in my bag from Atelier Purlaine. Uh, Frédéric gave it to me when I went there and bought yarn from her, I guess. I guess she does that for everyone. And this is what I have left from the part where I was knitting with three strands. And I have one ball, so I haven't finished the one strand part, but this is 200 meters. So that's a lot of yardage, um, or metrage, I should say. But I'm afraid I won't have enough to finish both the body and each sleeves. Amandine, so she was here and about, and there were little open markets and festivals and stuff like that in her area. So she said, I'm going to get back to you later on. She has three balls left and I asked her to keep them in her farm for me and and you know I will buy them mail them to me when 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 she's available I think with the three additional balls I'm going to be good or I may even have more than needed but I prefer to have leftovers rather than um to be out she doesn't have any of this blush pink any longer and uh, uh, if if she does have at some point I, I, I will have to if I don't have enough I will have to put it on hold and decide either I use another color for the sleeves I'm not sure I want to do that or wait for another batch that may be from a different color but if both sleeves have a different color and maybe I can put the front on hold, front and back, the body on hold and, and do the same at the tip of the body and the tip of the sleeves, maybe that could work. But I'm kind of worried I won't have enough yarn. 
I'm I'm on I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. I think I will have enough with the three additional balls. I think. So I'm waiting on what on her coming back, and she said she was going to be back at the end of last week. So maybe she has other things to be doing. But once again, a very very light because kid mohair is silk, kid silk mohair is very light and fluffy. If you if you can stand mohair. Uh, very light, very warm. I think I'm going to be very warm in that. Kind of a dressy one. I have a skirt that uh, I think it's going to go very well with it. Uh, so it's an easy knit for now and I'm knitting in the round. I have to say that at some point when I went from three strands to two strands, I don't know what I did. There was maybe that many stitches that were pearls where did i in a plain stockinette sweater where did i get the idea to pearl <laughs> that many stitches i don't know i have no idea and there is another place i could not i layered down i like ladder down ladder down i ladder down and i could go to a point where uh, horizontally and vertically everything was fine. So I could retrieve the stitches. I don't know what I did. I think I know what I did. And at some point there was a lot of strand, too much strand for the number of stitches. So I think what I did, uh, maybe the yarn got tucked onto itself uh, maybe that way and one strand I'm not sure you can see one strand was straight and I knit and one strand was that way and it pulled a lot of uh, strand there was too much yarn in that area and even if I could ladder back up and have all my all of my stitches at the right place the uh, metrage of the yarn that was there was making it not nice, but I can live with some parts that are not perfect. That's not a problem to me. But most of all, as you see, the fabric is very sheer. It was very obvious. So I decided I ripped back. Um, I ripped back maybe about 10 rows because at first I was thinking, I continued knitting. I saw it. I saw it and I said, what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Nobody going to be seeing it. And I'm going to be the only one knowing this is there and it's going to be fine. No, it was not fine. It was obvious. So I read back. Fortunately, the, uh, the mohair was not too wrinkled, too crinkled, and it was not too difficult to read back. And an advice that most of you know already, when you read back, and so I read back everything. I had a bubble light uh, stitch marker at the beginning of the row, more or less, so that I can place my beginning of row at the right place. And uh, uh, what I did is I picked up the last, the previous stitches, the last stitches I had not ripped back, on my way back, ripping back, with a very small needle. And I, I have, a, I forgot to place. Um, um, some earring. Okay, so I was ripping back and, and, and retrieving my stitches about at the same time so that some stitches do not sink down too much and I had only one to retrieve for the whole, the whole sweater and there are a lot of stitches on this sweater. I don't recall how many but a lot of stitches. So when it's the case, retrieve the stitches with a smaller needle. And then you can knit from the small needle to the big needle because at the end, the live stitches you are going to be, to be working on will be with the big needle, so it's okay. So I worked my way back. And then after that, I worked in the round, round um, uh, already. So yes, my dusking sweater, a bit of adventures and a bit of um, uncertainty. And I see, so it's two partial balls and one full one and a bit of another one. Uh, we'll see if I uh, have enough. We'll see. And you see this sweater. The nice thing about mohair that I like, you can do that. You can butch it up and then you can 
throw it in your bag you can uh, or your backpack i have a black one that is very old it's always in my backpack it's in all crinkle or all, all bunched up at the bottom of my backpack but when i am cold in the mountains even during the summertime you take it out and there are no wrinkles on the sweater so yeah my duskin yeah i have earrings <laughs> how rude of me not having earrings so next it's a new cast on. I cast it on on number, November 9th after I had finished uh, my little bini that was my birthday cast on. I had this project in my mind for a very long time and once again I've placed people in my knitting. There is that one pattern that I have already knit twice and it, I'm not much into knitting a pattern several times in a row, the same pattern several times in a row. So it's the Sorel sweater. So I've knit, I'm not sure which one is the front and which one is the back, it's not very important. I've knit the regular Sorel, uh, that's a luxurious sweater, let me tell you, because it's all la bien aimé. And, and I haven't been doing that since. Uh, uh, since I've started my no buy year and it was one of the of the reasons uh, not that I regret it uh, but the price of the sweater is uh, extremely important so La Bien Aimé with this uh, air guitar colorway that I love and uh, the mohair and there is a fade there are three three colorways air guitar storm and the north, I think, and Winterfell is the mohair. It's a very dark blue. You may see it that way. Okay, a beautiful sweater that I love, kind of a dressy one, and I really, really like it, and I wear it quite a lot. And I'm trying to wear my latest um, finished object on, on camera when I film, but I can assure you that I wear all of my knits. And I have, I have also made the summer, the summer one uh, from Jan, I think it was Ars Natura Creation. It's an Etsy shop and she's still doing Jan with these very nice blues uh, for the summertime. So there is a fade. There are three colorways I don't recall and, and these are one of a kind colorways so she dies and, and then it's, when it's gone, it's gone. So the clearer one, a middle part and uh, a darker one in the bottom. Same thing. I love, I love it and I wear it quite a bit. Okay, so I had the idea, I had seen, I'm not sure I recall, I think at least Caitlin from Cadillac, when the Sorel was all hyped and everything, I think what she did was not fade the yarn, the main yarn, and keeping um, keeping the mohair all the way. She had one yarn and she faded um, the mohair. And I had this idea in mind since I had seen her doing this and I said okay I have an idea and it's the time I hope you do not hear the house move and crack too much um, so this project is in another bag from uh, Frédéric Atelier Purlaine uh, because I bought yarn last time I went there and I'm going this Saturday and I, I will need your help I think I will need your help so I'm knitting, so she has two, two breeds. Um, the Hampshire Down that I've already knit, the Pathway Shawl, and I forgot to bring it back with me. And the Romney. The Romney is um, a little different. And it's a two-ply, if I recall. And if I see, maybe if I see correctly. It's a finer yarn than um, the Romney, the Hampshire Down that I've used already. And I have fingering also for uh, the Hampshire Down. And what I had decided is to use the mohair that Rosemary from uh, uh, Australia sent me last year. So I have started um, another Sorel with that lime green, I think it's called leaf green, uh, 
baby seagull mohair, the same kind of quality as uh, for my dust skin. So it's a lime green type of colorway and you see the white, creamy white Romney yarn next to it mixed with uh, the lime green mohair. So my idea is to go down to use all of this. Wherever it brings me to, I will use it up. Or if, if, if once, the, um, once the motif is done, I, I will see how much is left. And I may decide at this point that I want the second part with another, uh, another mohair that I forgot to take out of my bag. And this other mohair is in another bag by Atelier Purlaine. She's so very generous. I bought a five or six or something and she's gave me uh, some of them. If you recall last year, and I still have one skin, last year, uh, one of you also uh, offered me Bichébuche. So it's the petit lamb's wool in dark gray, dark blue turquoise or dark turquoise blue. And uh, so it's the pe Le Petit Lamps Wool and Le Petit Silk Mohair in uh, the same colorway, da dark blue turquoise, I think. So my idea is once I finish, I'm finished with the lime green, I'm going to fade into the darker green. And as I was thinking about that, I cast it on and knit one row with uh, Le Petit Lamps Wool in dark green Dark, dark blue turquoise and with the mohair. Uh, so the, um, the color is going to be that way and the bottom of the body, the last row and the cast off of the body and of the sleeves. And here we are with um, uh, that, that sweater. So I'm kind of thinking lime green is not much going well with my own skin tone it's not much in my colors but if you do recall with the first part of this um, this yarn I need a hood I need a hood so if I don't like too much the lime green next to my skin I will wear the hood uh, as a as a color so that the dark green is going to be next to my skin and uh, the rest is going to be there. So I'm, not, I'm trying not to stretch because my needles, I haven't secured my needles uh, yet. Uh, and okay, so we are on the first part of the, the first uh, diagram. And I'm really in love with this uh, motif. And I'm really sorry, I think that when um, the uh, windows are closed. Um, the lights are too high. I, I, I will have to work on that. And it's blowing out. Maybe if I do it that way, you can see the motif here. And I really, really like when um, my knit have some dimension. So you see how here there is a deeper valley than, than the elongated stitch create because you, you need some pearls there. And I do like that very much. And even though my previous sorrel is stored uh, in, 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 my, in my drawers and with other, other needs on top of it, you can see that there is still some uh, difference of level and higher the... Um, the elongated stitch, stitches are higher, so I'm a bit around there, I guess. So yes, when I posted a, a, a picture uh, uh, on Instagram about that sweater, I asked Frédéric if she did recognize her Romney, and she said, no, I can't recognize the Romney here. Uh, yeah, so that's my um, current work in progress with the dusking and I'm working on these two ones uh, exclusively. I want I want to go down. Um, this one is not going very quickly. I take my time and I appreciate the pattern and uh, I may I may decide to uh, fade the darker green at some point even if I haven't finished. But my my goal is to finish. Um, the lighter, the lighter green. I, I, I will see where I am. I've waited out all my uh, little uh, 
uh, all the little parts so that I can spread out um, what I have. Yes, so it's gonna be a summer color, <laughs> summer colored sweater for the winter time. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am so very happy even though I'm not sure this color fits me very well. I, I know this one does a lot better. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I really, when I received, both of them were presents. When I received these two mohair last year, I knew already I was going to do something with both of them. What I did not know, but and now you know. So um, yeah, another, another sweater with two of you are in, in this sweater and it's bringing me much um, joy and happiness. Okay, next is a project I ripped out. I was languishing and languishing and languishing over. I knew I had two long meetings, um, Zoom meetings or online meetings and a long phone call. So I decided I was going to carefully unravel the it's it's a mini it unravel or hat uh, the beginning of the hat not to cut anything I managed not to cut anything and uh, and rip it out I was very unhappy not with the pattern I think and as the pattern asks you to start and measure your gauge as you go and then gives you directions I think it's my own fault not the pattern's fault it's the most my that was my muscle burr hat that I knit with La Bien Aimée. So it was one of the colorway I had decided to place into my Sorel, but did not because I think it was not going well with the other colors. And uh, uh, Julia from La Bien Aimée helped me and, and, and chose the storm colorway for me to go in, the, in between the two other ones. So this one was knit with Fury and yeah, Fury. And uh, I will pop up a picture so that you can see it. And here is it. Here it is. So at some point, as there was some color pulling, I knit from the inside and the outside of the uh, of the cake so that I can alternate and um, do some helical knitting and alternate. So you have, you see, you have both of them here that are quite different. But anyway, I ripped it all out, and I'm gonna knit it again. I'm going to knit it again as a muscle burr because I like the idea of it very much and I liked the feel and the double layer and everything. I liked it very much. So, but I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing, whether I knit it as is with Fury and Fury only and doing some helical knitting and maybe, you know, have two separate balls that I'm uh, going to cake up and weigh out and separate in two and do the, the right way, or if I'm going to be striping it out with other things. In one of my mother's bags that she gave me a long time ago are all my fingering leftovers, um, all the little bits, even the smallest ones. And I think I have kept somewhere um, the very, very small part I have left of air guitar. There it is. I don't want to, there it is. This is all I have left from air guitar and this colorway was just exceptional. And um, I had another colorway. This is why my first Sorel was very expensive. This one is Sosu, also from La Bien Aimée. And I was thinking that I may be striping the two. So either for muscle burr or hats or something else, uh, maybe I have enough for a t-shirt, I don't know. I don't know. So I may I may do something like that with these two colorways, but I haven't decided yet. I have other projects that I need to be taken care of. So it's it's not for to it's not for tomorrow morning or tonight. Uh, yeah, but I ripped out and um, as I was ripping out, I was kind of sad and because I liked the beanie. It was just way too big. Um, I was kind of sad and you know as I'm talking to you right now I think I may knit it again as is with just fury and uh, uh, do some helical knitting and and, and uh, uh, just knit it as one 
piece and one solid colorway uh, with that yarn. Okay, so that's it for today. I've talked about everything I wanted to be talking about, my projects, um, what I'm working on, what I finished, what I ripped out. So I'm going to be moving into more of a life update segment. Uh, segment. If you're not interested into that, I thank you very much for being here with me and watching the video and liking and commenting and sharing and everything and doing all the YouTube goodness uh, to have my channel being exposed to more people. And I do hope I will see you next time. Okay, life updates. Um, there are several and the most important one was I did go to my knee injection last week. I did bring everything, all the paperwork and all the products. So I got my knee injected and boy, let me tell you the first. So he said, when, if, if, if you are sensitive to medical stuff, I will, I will try to find a, um, and place a stamp here and timestamp and then you can jump. Uh, he said, well, the needle, it's going to be like when you have a vaccine or your blood checked up and it's going to be okay. And as a matter of fact, it, I could feel the needle going in, but it did not hurt that much. When he first injected the anesthetics, a local anesthetic, it was wow. <laughs> so I screamed for me not to be moving my knee because I was thinking there is a needle in my knee, so I better not be moving. And he said, okay, 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 few seconds, few seconds, it's the anesthetic and it's gonna kick in and it could be kicking in and you won't you won't now you you don't feel anything anymore. Yes, I was not feeling anything anymore, but these first few seconds looked like an eternity to me. It was extremely painful. And I, I will have to be talking about that with the surgeon because he was kind of, you know, on a rush and uh, um, it's, it's a radiology place where they do that and the echography and stuff like that. So, you know, patients who are going that way and he does that every day. So uh, uh, I did not take much time to be talking with him. Once the pain was gone, he, he waited a few seconds, and once the pain was gone, he injected the product and gave, gave me all the recommendations. And uh, as the time of, in the week and the day was changed, my uh, uh, elder son's girlfriend could, could come and pick me up after the injection so that I did not have to go back home with a taxi or something. So she brought me back home, and he had said, at least 72 hours of rest. And I had said, well, I can have 24 for sure, 36 for sure, but one day after that, I need to go teach and I can't not go there. And I can't move the teaching times around and everything. So I went to go teach and uh, I decided I was going to go with the public transportation as I'm used to, I, I, I ride the bus. And I had, how do you say canes? Um, not that I really needed assistance to be walking. I did not need that. But one, there was, once again, wind and, wind and rain. So it was slippery. And I was afraid to be falling. I did not want to fall on that knee just after the injection. So having <laughs> a walking assistance, people are careful about you. Even the bus drivers, they would wait, I would sit down and everything. So that was nice of them. Um, so I went to teach and I went back home this afternoon to be resting my knee. And I, after it was the weekend, so I did not go work or anything. Thing is, so it was, the knee injection was on a Wednesday afternoon, beginning of the afternoon. When I woke up the next morning, and I walked, and even I woke up during the night and I went to the bathroom and I walked. I discovered I had forgotten what it was to be walking without pain. And I can't say now that we are 
a bit less than a week, five days from the five, six days from the injection. I can't say that the pain is completely gone. No, it's not completely, completely gone. There are some positions and some movements that I still feel my knee. I haven't uh, started physical therapy again and I will go there next Thursday. So it's going to be a week and a couple of days after the, one day after the injection, a week and a day. So uh, I discovered, I had forgotten how it was to be moving without pain. That's how much I had pain. And it reminded me of that. So I think it's a success. That's a good thing. And now I need to take an appointment to go see the surgeon. And we are going to be talking about the rest, my hip and everything, with that new data that the new injection is working. What he had said is that, um, in his opinion, knee pains are heavily linked to hip pains. So he said, if you want to have just your knee fixed and replaced, you will go find another surgeon because I won't do it for you. I will first work on the hip and then we will see. If the knee is not better, we will work on the knee. If the knee is better, whatever situation it's, it is, uh, it's going to be 100% success for you. Okay, so I trust him and I, I want to go back to see him now with this new element. So uh, working without, walking without pain makes such a difference in my life. Okay, so that was my knee. My mother, always the same. Um, the weather is bad. I'm so happy that the cats are uh, sleeping on, uh, on the couches over there. So they are not fighting. They are not asking me to go out. I guess they are feeling the storm. Um, and everything else is about the same. There are other, other things happening in other parts of the family, but for now I can't really talk about. So uh, at, at some point I may, I may talk about when all of that, when they are comfortable with it. And if I never talk about, about it, sorry, I will never talk about it. Okay, so I guess we are done for today. I need to go... I need to get going because I need to eat and, and, and uh, go work and go teach. So, uh, yeah, I hope that this video finds you well. I know some of you have, are having difficulties. And I can assure you that I place each and every one of you in my little stitches when I knit. And uh, even when I rip out, I place you so that I have a positive intention in my knitting and in my knitting activity so that I can place positive things and joy and happiness into my knitting because the world is going crazy. We thought with the pandemic that it was the craziest, or I mean, I mean, maybe I thought that with the pandemic, I was, you know, experimenting and living something of once of a lifetime. It was so, so sad, so many people died, it was so difficult. And I was thinking, you know, when, when people in history, 100, 200 years from now, we will be talking about that, I, 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 I will have been living it right now. And the world is even craziest right now. There is even more suffering. There is even more people who die. And it affects me so, so much that I need to place uh, joy and happiness into my knitting. And I do hope that you manage to do that too. I'm thinking of each and every one of you, and in particular, the ones who have having or are having health issues or other, other issues. Uh, you are in my heart, you are in my little stitches, and I send them all out to you. And I thank you very much for being here with me, and I will see you next time.